In this session, we are going to discuss correlation measures between two variables. Especially, we will introduce covariance and a correlation coefficient. Before we introduce covariance between two variables, we will first examine or review the variance for a single variable. What is variance? I think you all know what is average. For example, the average salary of employees in a company. Okay. The average, also called mean mathematically, is represented as mu. So mu actually is the expected value of x. However, if we just use mean, we may not be sufficiently represent the, the trend or the, the spread of the value in uh, variable x. Okay. For example, we may not only like to know the average salary of an, in a company, but we also like to know how this value spreads. That means whether they are very close to the middle to the mean, or they are widespread, they have many very high salaries and many very low salaries. Okay. In that case, we introduce the concept of variance, which actually is to measure how much the value of x deviate from the mean or the expected value of x. Essentially, we use sigma square to represent the variance of x. Sigma is called a standard deviation. Okay. Variance of x actually is the expected value of uh, x deviate from the mean, if we take the square, simply says no matter it's positive or negative, we all change them into positive. Okay. Then if x is discrete variable, okay, then the formula is written like this. That simply says we use sum of this function. Okay. This function is actually is x deviate from the mu, from the mean value, take the square, times x density function. Okay. If x is a continuous variable, so we will take integral where uh, it, the range is from minus infinity to infinity. To that extent, we say variance is the expected value of the square deviation from the mean. It, for this formula, we can also do, do a little uh, transformation. For example, we can transform for the expect value of x, you know, square deviation from the mean, we can write down its expected value of x square minus uh, mean, uh, means square. Okay. This transformation actually has been introduced in many textbooks. It's quite simple. We're not going to introduce here. In many cases, if we write in this form, it may lead to more efficient computation, especially when you want to do incremental computation. Uh, if we take a sample, then the sample variance is actually the average square deviation of the data value xi from the sample mean mu hat. Okay. So the sample variance is written as sigma hat square. So we often use this formula or use a similar transform formula to compute it. Now we introduce a covariance for two variables. Once we get two variables, x1 and x2, we want to see how these two variables, they change together, whether they are going up together, going down together, which could be the positive covariance. Okay. Let's look at the definition. The definition actually, originally definition is x1 minus mu one square. Now we see actually these two variables, we want to see x1, uh, the difference from its mean value of x1, x2, the difference from x2's mean value or expected values. Then we look at their expectation. Okay. Mathematically, we also can transform this into this form. If we get a sample covariance, we look at the sample covariance between x1 and x2. So the, the sample covariance is calculated by their difference from the sample mean. Okay. 
So that's also popularly used. Okay. Actually, the sample covariance can be considered as a generalization of sample variance. For example, originally we want to look at the two variables x1 and x, x2, they are covariance. But if we think this two, x1 and x2, we replace it by x1, that means we just look at the two variable x1, x1, what is their covariance? Then we can represent this two by one. Then in that case, the sample covariance the formula, we look at this formula, we change the variable from i2 to i1 and mu2 to mu1 hat. So then we will derive this formula. This formula essentially is sigma one hat and its square. Okay. So we probably can easily see the sample variance is just a special case of sample covariance when the two variables are just the same. When this, the covariance value is greater than zero, we say there it is a positive covariance. If it's its value is less than zero, it is negative covariance. Okay. If these two variables are independent, then their covariance is zero. However, the converse is not true. That means not when the covariance is zero, does not mean x1 and x2 are always independent. Only under certain additional assumptions, for example, uh, if the data follows uh, multivariable normal distributions, in that case, uh, the covariance of zero implies independence. Now we look at a, a concrete example. Suppose we have two stocks, x1 and x2. They have the following values in one week, like these five, value, five pairs of values. Then the question is, if the, the stock affect whether the stock okay, affected by the same industry trends, that means whether their price will rise or fall together. Okay. Then we calculate their covariance. We will be able to know whether they are positively correlated or negative one. Okay. So if we look at the covariance formula, especially we use the more simplified computation formula, then we can calculate the expected value of x1, which is the mean value of x1, the expected value of x2, which is the mean value of x2. Then we look at their covariance, actually is, we use this formula, we look at their product, their dot product, the sum of, then divide by, sum of them divide by the number of variable pairs, then we minus this is expected value of x1 and expected value of x2. Then we get the final value is 4. Okay. That means uh, the covariance is greater than 0. That means x1 and x2, they rise or fall together. Then if we want to normalize them, we will introduce correlation coefficient. That means for two numerical variables, we want to study their correlation, which essentially is the standard covariance. That means we want to normalize the covariance value with the standard deviation of each variable. So it is defined as correlation coefficient is the covariance divided by the product of their standard deviation. Or you can say the covariance is divided by the product of variance get their square root. Okay. So if we look at sample correlation for two attributes x1 and x2, then essentially we get we get a row one two hat is equal to the sigma one two hat is essentially their sample covariance divided by their sample uh, standard deviation. Uh, in a concrete formula, we can write in this way. Okay. Then if this co correlation coefficient is greater than zero, that means A and B are positively correlated. That means X1's values 
increase as x2s. The higher value greater than zero, the stronger correlation. Okay. If rho 1, 2 equals zero, that implies they are independent and they're the same assumption as discussing the covariance. If they are less than zero, they are negative correlated. Then we can look at the, a set of variables. We can see, for example, for two variables, when they are perfectly negative correlated, they line up like this. Their correlation coefficient is minus one. Okay. Then if they gradually become not so uh, perfectly negative correlated, you will see their, their trend. When this value is zero, that's, you could not see anything like a positive correlated or negative correlated. But when you gradually grow these correlation coefficient, you will see their value become more and more correlated. When they are perfect correlated, then the correlation coefficient is one. That simply says, the correlation coefficient value range is from minus one to one. Okay. Then if we draw this in the scatter plot, we'll see the set of points, their correlation coefficient changes from minus one to plus one in this shape. In many cases, we may want to write, for two variables, we, want, we may want to write their variance and the correlation information into the two by two covariance matrix form. Okay. Uh, for example, you may say the variable one is self-correlation there, essentially their variance is this one. And for their covariance between one and two is defined here, between two and one is defined here, and then that's, that's variable two's variance. So this is a typical, you know, two by two covariance matrix. In general, if we have T, D numerical attributes, that means suppose we find a data set, it has N rows and D columns, that means we really have D numerical attributes. Then their covariance matrix essentially is written in this form, you probably can see the this is the variance of variable one, this is a variable of the second dimension, this is a variable of the d dimensions. Okay. And their covariance for each one will be lining up like this. So in summary, in this section, in this lecture, we actually discussed uh, several important concepts. We introduced this similarity measure between objects, okay. especially for numerical data, we introduced Minkowski distance. For symmetric and asymmetric binary variable, we studied their proximity measure, especially Jacker coefficient. We introduced the distance measure between categorical attributes, ordinal attributes, and the mixed types. We also introduced cosine similarity as proximity measure between two vectors. We introduced covariance and a correlation coefficient as correlation measures between two variables. And we give a few interesting additional reading. These are the several books. They contain interesting chapters discussing the different measures. Thank you. Thank you.